Let me tell you about my last day. It was Friday. Good Friday. <laughs> Good Friday. It may have been at least started out to be the happiest day of my life. On Palm Sunday, word had reached Washington that General Lee's army had surrendered. The war was almost over. And so I was happy that the terrible bloodshed would soon end. So that made me happy. I was happy that the Union had been preserved, that not one single star or the star-spangled banner had been lost. I was happy that slavery was on its road to extinction. I had a cabinet meeting in the morning, not knowing it would be my last. There were many in the North who wanted to extract vengeance on the South. Some of them were clamoring for seeing a rebel leader swinging from every lamppost in Washington. And at that cabinet meeting, I said, I hope there'll be no bloody work, no, no persecution after the war. Let none expect me to participate or in killing or hanging any of them. That cabinet meeting ended. I said to Mary, let's take a carriage ride out by Rock Creek. As we rode along, we talked about how, how unhappy we had been during our days in Washington, resolved that we would be happier. One of our sons, Tad, had a learning disability. I told Mary, I said, when my term expires, we'll go back to Illinois. I'll resume the practice of law, and I want him to have a little field, a little garden, all his own pony. Maybe we'll travel a bit. We'll love to see California, and maybe we'll go to the Holy Land. I remember when I ran for Congress, my opponent, I served one term in, the, uh, in Congress, my opponent was a preacher. And I remember one night I slipped into the congregation, he spied me. He said, Lincoln, you're on the road to hell. I didn't know then that hell is a White House in Washington. Nor did I know that that very afternoon, a very famous actor had slipped into Ford's Theater walked up the steps to the opera box where we would be seated that evening, bored a little hole in the door so he could watch the occupants in the opera box. Play had already begun when we arrived at the theater. They halted the performance. The orchestra played Hail to the Chief. They gave us a standing ovation. We settled down to watch the play. It was a comedy. Felt good to laugh. Felt good to laugh. In the performance, Mary snuggled up against me and whispered, what will people say when they see me clinging to you like this? <laughs> I don't think they'll say anything. If they do, it won't matter, will it? Then came the final scene played by the talented actor. In one hand, he held a steel dagger. In the other, a small pistol. The actor crouched behind his victim the actor squeezed the trigger. The bullet came crashing into my skull, came to rest behind the right eye. The actor jumped to the stage. The actor said his line seeks semper tyrannis, thus always to tyrants. For a stunned moment, many people thought it was part of the play. Perhaps it was. Did not Shakespeare say, all the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely actors. Somebody asked me, President Lincoln, how'd you like to be remembered? And I told them, I'd like to be remembered as a common man, an ordinary man, who went around pulling up thistles, planting a flower, 
where I thought a flower would grow. As I leave you, I'd like to leave you with my wish for your success. But it's important to know what success is, for it might happen to you and you wouldn't know. So what is success? To laugh often and much. To win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children. To earn the admiration of honest critics and endure the betrayal of false friends. To appreciate beauty. To look for the best in others. To leave the world a bit better. To leave the world a bit better, whether by a healthy child, a garden plot, a redeemed social condition, to know that even one soul has breathed easier because you have lived. This is to have succeeded. And my dear friends, that's the kind of success I wish for you. May God bless you. May God bless the United States of America. Thank you very much.